there is no connection from this point out to the adjacent street. Um, so this, if this were to occur, it would only occur once that connection, once that future connection is made. Because there'd be no sense for the public to circulate to the boundary line here. So the, I guess the question that we're asking the board at this point is uh, can the applicant have the option of either doing, either providing the easement or the fee? Uh, I think we can get into that discussion after we okay. have our public hearing. Okay. Thank you. And then the final, uh, the final change has been the road maintenance agreement. And uh, uh, we are, our goal is to have one road maintenance agreement that uh, everybody, that all lots can sign on to, having a, a single road maintenance agreement. Um, what we have submitted to you in our packet are two road maintenance agreements. The first document would be uh, road maintenance responsibilities for the front portion of the road that would include all of the lot owners. And the second road maintenance agreement is for only the last two lots, which would include this section of the roadway, the extension of the Golden Ridge Lane. What, what's, what's keeping, what's stopping well, there from being one? It's, um, you know, it's, it's just, uh, we, we need to get everybody on board. Uh, there's, no, there's no one stopping it at this point, it's just, the, it, it's very time consuming. It, it will take some time to uh, sort out all of the issues and making sure that what we come up with is equitable for, for everyone. So that's, Lee Lowry is working on this, the attorney. Madam Chairman? Yes. They ask if you were to grant an easement for access to the to the suggested public way that runs off the private road. How does that affect, or does that affect the uh, maintenance agreement? Does that have any effect on that, or if we were to provide a uh, a pedestrian easement? Mm -hmm. Would that have any effect on the road maintenance agreement? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, th this, this has a pedestrian way that exists today, a mm -hmm. pedestrian trail. It would be similar to that. Great, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on the planning board have a question that we need to ask before we do the public hearing? All right, I'll now open the floor to a public hearing. If anyone would like to speak, please come up to the podium and give us your name and address. Anyone here who'd like to speak? Hi there, Steve Young, 8 Golden Ridge Lane. And I'd just like to clarify what John was saying about the pedestrian easement is not part of the existing Golden Ridge Lane. It runs beside it. And I don't know, Maureen probably answered the question better, but I don't think they put Greenbelt trails on private roads. They're usually in the green. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for you. <coughs> so how, how do you feel about the value of that pedestrian easement? I mean, given that you live there, do you feel like there's value in having connectivity, possibly, to the east? I think, you know, like I spoke to Maureen before, people are using it now to walk and stuff, but, mm -hmm. you know, I think you'd have to connect it somehow to the trail. You know what I mean? 
connected to the trail that runs on the other side of your house. Right. Either bring the easement down over the property some more. Or, yeah. I don't think you want people coming out into the roadway to, to access the trail. Coming out onto 77? No, the private. Oh, oh okay. You don't? No. Okay. So you would want to see the easement running next to the road, outside of the right of I would think so, yeah. But they do use it now, and I am not opposed to a PM there. Yeah. And so people walk yeah. across the property? Because we were under the impression after the site walk that it was mostly snowmobilers. That's why the trail is, exists, is because of snowmobilers. So the snowmobilers cut it, but then pedestrians use it? Uh, like, yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Anyone else want to address the proposed amendment to the Golden Ridge subdivision? All right, then the public hearing is now closed. Planning board members, questions? Anyone? Liza? Yeah. Okay. It may not be part of this. If I was living on, somebody living on this road, the beginning of the road is going to get a lot of traffic. People at the end are going to get very little traffic. The house at the end will have one car using it or two. And it will progressively get more wear all the way down. So is it proportional, proportional repair or maintenance, or is it just standard? You all pay the same amount when it's needed. I mean, it's just a question. John, do you want to answer that? Yeah. And, and that's, that's the reason why we have two agreements, is that the, you're right, the front portion will, will get more vehicles, more wear, and everybody is, will share in that responsibility. Including the, the, new, the new extension? Yes. Yeah, because they'll use it also. And then, and then the second document, as I said, will only pertain to the, the rear two. The, the, the amount of involvement is proportional to where you live. Yes. Anybody else? Liza? You have well, a question? I mean, just as a point of discussion, I feel like the, the real interesting issue here is can we give the applicant the option to have the easement or pay the open space impact fee? And uh, I don't have a lot of experience with pedestrian easements, so. I guess I'm curious uh, uh, to know more about Mr. Young's comment about would we put it on the right of way or next to the right of way, and which would make the most sense? Um, it's either on the applicant's lot or on the Young's lot if it's not on the right of way. It seems that easement extension to connect with the green belt. I see. Okay. And, yeah. And, um, but how important is it that it's? So you're, Outside of the right of you're referring to this section yeah, right in right here. Yeah. That segment. Um, so maybe some guidance from Maureen on that, or yeah, what are your insights? I don't know why we couldn't extend that easement. I mean, this is unusable land. It's. Um, I don't see why we couldn't extend it down along the edge of the right of way, the outside edge of the right of way, but uh, Maureen. Sure. A um, couple of questions. The, the first one is providing the applicant with an option. Just so the board is aware, I'm not saying you can't do that, but under uh, subdivision ordinance standard Q where the open space impact fee resides, it says that um, in order to accommodate the expected needs of the subdivision for open space and recreational areas without diminishing the community standard of public open space, the applicant shall be required to donate land or cash contribution in lieu of actual land dedication or combination of both at the option of the board. So you would be delegating your authority to the applicant if you left the option with them. Um, the second question is whether um, it would be preferable to have the pedestrian connection on the new section of Golden Ridge Lane or on the adjacent section, a, a land adjacent to the new section of Golden Ridge Lane. Um, the current trail um, is immediately adjacent to Golden Ridge Lane. Um, and that is a section that is relatively well used because it's a main access point to Great Pond. Uh, I do staff the Conservation Commission 
and one of their challenges is maintenance of existing trails. And I would, I can't speak for them because I have not looked at this, but it seems that it would probably be more practical to put this other section on the new portion of Golden Ridge Lane because there's only two houses there, there's not going to be a lot of cars, and the odds of maintaining a path immediately adjacent with this level of traffic I think is going to be pretty difficult for that, that commission to do, even with the additional help they're now getting for maintenance. So, but I can't give you an answer, you know, exactly what they would want to do uh, without going to the commission and presenting that to them. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and then, so that brings another question to mind. So, do we have the resources to maintain a pedestrian easement and clear, clear the way where that proposed one is on the plan? Again, the, the, the town of Cape Elizabeth has a greenbelt plan that's been adopted by the town council. The Conservation Commission is the steward of the greenbelt system, and they have never let the burden of maintenance uh, dissuade them from accepting pedestrian easements where they make sense. In addition, um, the council has just approved a part-time, it's a seasonal position that will be assisting the Conservation Commission with trail maintenance. So uh, it would be, I think it would be unfortunate if maintenance were, a, were, were to be used as a reason one way or the other to determine whether or not this is a, an appropriate uh, option for the town. Um, we're, we're handling the maintenance issues. Okay. And then, oh, sorry. lastly, just a related question. How, how could we get the Conservation Commission to look at this and weigh in on the issue that is currently yes, the that town's option? My question, whether this, from the Conservation Commission's point of view, it might not make more sense to have the money as opposed to this particular small piece of connection. Certainly we, we can ask the Conservation Commission to look at this. Um, they meet the second Tuesday of the month, so they met last Tuesday. They won't, um, they won't officially meet again until the second Tuesday in June. They did not look at this plan that was before the Planning Board because it didn't include a resource protection permit, which is what they look at, and they weren't aware that there was this pedestrian easement issue at their last meeting. So that's why you didn't hear from them. I'm sure they'd be happy to provide you with comments. Um, the question is whether the applicant is hoping to get a, a resolution tonight on this application or whether they're willing to wait another month. No, we're hoping to get a resolution. Yeah. Anybody else have other questions or other thoughts on this particular issue? Carol? Yes, this particular issue. Okay, move on then. <laughs> I want to understand the rebuilding of the current section of uh, Golden Ridge Lane talks about in the in the note that we have with the notes from Steve Harding uh, about the box cut and te test permits to determine whether the gra existing dra ga gravel and uh, quality of gravel is, is adequate. And then we have a note that we received tonight from Public Works Director who seems inclined to think that if I'm in reading it correctly that it should be rebuilt and test permits, test pits are, are not yeah, going to do the job. And, and I'm going to let the applicant chime in. This is, this is uh, a disagreement between town staff and the applicant. Um, when Golden Ridge, Golden, let me put it this way, just because Golden Ridge Lane is called a lane doesn't mean it was ever built as a road. It, it was originally built as a private driveway. There was no inspection by the town. There was no review of it by the town because people can build private driveways without any kind of town review. Uh, in 2003, we now had three houses with access off of Golden Ridge Lane and a proposal to add two more lots with access off of Golden Ridge Lane. And at that time, uh, it was approved as a private road with the condition that it be built to town private road standards. And that has never happened. So the current applicant is before you to add another lot and is requesting that the, its approach to rebuilding the road be to basically dig test pits in certain locations to try to confirm what's actually under there. Uh, the code, excuse me, the public works director and the town engineer are saying that no matter how you set up a test pit pattern, in the end you're guessing. And they're recommending that you in fact 
dig up what's there um, and make sure you're putting in the 18 inches of gravel where it ought to be. Um, they are saying that if the